Hi, my name is Tim Burns. I run this channel which examines the arguments of Kent Hovind. I recently had the chance to email some questions to Kent and he answered them, so in this series of videos I will be responding to his answers. For my tenth question, I showed Kent an excerpt from the Answers in Genesis Statement of Faith. By definition, no apparent, perceived, or claimed evidence in any field, including history and chronology, can be valid if it contradicts the scriptural record. Then I asked him, do you agree with this statement? And if so, are you admitting that no amount of evidence could ever change your mind? Is there any point in anyone providing evidence if you're just going to ignore anything that doesn't fit your specific interpretation of the Bible? I think Hovind's answer to this question is an excellent example of how he talks out of both sides of his mouth. He starts out by saying how he's not aware of any evidence, he doesn't believe there is any, but he would change his mind in a heartbeat if somebody could show him some. That all seems perfectly reasonable and fair. But then, right after criticizing me for an alleged cheap shot, he has a moment of clarity, of candor, and makes a simple, definitive statement. There is no evidence. He drops the facade of uncertainty and open-mindedness. He doesn't say, there is no evidence as far as I know. There is no qualification. He simply says, there is no evidence. Then he adds, but if you think there is, don't talk about it, provide it. What would be the point when he's already decided there is no evidence? While I appreciate the opportunity, I think it's kind of a meaningless gesture for Kent Hovind to invite me to produce my evidence for evolution. Does he really think some random guy on the internet with no advanced degrees or special training is just sitting on some amazingly compelling evidence for evolution that no one's ever seen before? If I had that, I'd be publishing it in a scientific journal and collecting my Nobel Prize. The best I can ever hope to do is pass on information and evidence and data that far more learned and scholarly people have already found. See, the reason this is all kind of meaningless is because Kent Hovind doesn't need me to give him the evidence for evolution. If he really was open to being presented with evidence, he would have already gone and found all the mountains of evidence that are already out there. It's not hard to find. I'll post a link in the description to one video that helped me down the road of accepting the scientific evidence for evolution, just as one small microcosmic example of all the evidence that's out there. But I'm just going to let you know, if you're a dyed-in-the-wool creationist, it will not change your mind. I have no illusions about that. If your first thought upon hearing that I'm presenting evidence is, there is no evidence, then you can't really say you're open to seeing evidence. So all of that would be a really good reason for me to cop out and not bother wasting my time accepting Kent's challenge to show him five evidences. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I've got two more videos in this series, and then I'm going to give Kent Hovind the five examples he asked for. But I'll only be doing it because it'll be fun to have another special episode just for me, and not because I believe for even an instant that it, or all the evidence you can imagine, would ever change his mind. He's already seen a ton of evidence in the 105 debates he's done, and he's still in denial enough that he can look at, directly at the camera and say, there is no evidence. I'm not going to change his mind about that, but what the heck, I'll give him the evidence anyway.